thank you. Um, can I please ask now that we start the live stream and recording of the meeting? Madam Mayor. Our last meeting with Gretchen Lake and the hospital minister is on mute, Mr. Wellsby. Madam Mayor, you're on mute. Could you unmute your microphone, please? Sorry about that. Talking to myself. Good evening. And welcome to the budget setting meetings, which is our fourth virtual meeting of the Council. Since our last meeting, infection rates and hospital admi admissions thankfully have started to fall and the Prime Minister has announced his roadmap to gradually relax of the lockdown restrictions. In the meantime, when you receive an invitation to take up the vaccine, please pay, play your part, both for your own health and for the safety of others. I've already had my first dose of vaccine. There is nothing to fear, but if you are unsure, then speak to your GP. I'll continue to chair the meeting tonight, but will now hand over to Mr Dave Wellsby, Chief Executive of the Council, who will deal with the details proceedings. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to begin by inviting Jane Ellis to uh, complete the roll call and to invite the members to introduce themselves to the watching public, please. Thank you, Mr. Wellsby. Um, firstly, the worship for the Mayor, Councillor June Harrison. Good evening, Councillor June Harrison, Barnfield Ward. Councillor Judy um, um, Addison. Councillor Judith Addison, Emmanuel Ward, Oswald Twistle. Thank you. Councillor Josh Allen. Uh, Councillor Josh Allen, Emmanuel Ward. Thank you. Councillor Mohammed Ayoub. Councillor Mohammed Ayoub, Central Ward, Arkington. Thank you. Councillor Nurdad um, Aziz. Good evening, Councillor Nurdad Aziz. <laughs> Uh, Ward in Grey Tower. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Jean Battle. Good evening. Councillor Jean Battle, Church Ward. Thank you. Councillor Sarah Brickcliffe. Good evening. Councillor Sarah Brickcliffe, St Andrews Ward, Oswald Whistle. Thank you. Councillor Stephen Button. Good evening. Councillor Stephen Button, Altham Ward. Thank you. Councillor Andrew Clegg. Good evening, uh, Councillor Andrew Clark, Millshire Ward. Thank you, Councillor Lorraine Cox. Good evening, Councillor Lorraine Cox, Church Ward. Thank you, Councillor Paul Cox. Good evening, Councillor Paul Cox, Millshire Ward, Accrington. Thank you, Councillor Munsif Dad. Good evening, Councillor Munsif Dad, Spring Hill Ward, Accrington. Thank you, Councillor Stuart Eaves. Councillor Stuart Eaves, St Andrews Ward, Oswald Swissell. Thank you, Councillor Diane Fielding. Good evening, Councillor Diane Fielding, Spring Hill Ward, Accrington. Thank you, Councillor Melissa Fisher. Good evening, Councillor Melissa Fisher, representing Clayton Limoys. Thank you, Councillor Glenn Harrison. Good evening, Councillor Glenn Harrison, representing St Oswald's Ward in Oswald Twistle. Thank you, Councillor Marlene Howarth. Good evening, Councillor Marlene Howarth, St Oswald's Ward, Oswald Twistle. Thank you, Councillor Eamon Higgins. Good evening, Councillor Eamon Higgins, Court Ward. Thank you, Councillor Terry Hearn. Good evening, Terry Hearn, Councillor for Baxendon. Thank you, Councillor Abdul Khan. Good evening, Councillor Abdul Khan, representing Central Ward in Accrington. Thank you, Councillor Chris Knight. Good evening, Hyburn. Councillor Chris Knight here, representing St Oswald's in Oswald Twistle. Thank you, Councillor Patrick McGinley. Councillor McGinley. 
Yes, it's sorry, I'm, I was on mute. Uh, hello and good evening to all our listeners. Uh, Councillor Patrick McGinley, Overton Ward. Thank you. Councillor Michael Miller. Good evening, Councillor Michael Miller, representing Michigan. Thank you. Councillor Jenny Molyneux. Good evening, Councillor Jenny Molyneux, representing Overton Ward in Great Harwood. Thank you. Councillor Tim O'Kane. Hello, Tim O'Kane from Clayton Moores Ward. Thank you. Councillor Dave Parkins. Good evening, everyone. Councillor Dave Parkins representing Honcourt Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bernadette Parkinson. Good evening, Bernadette Parkinson, Never to Warn it, Ward in Great Hall. Thank you. Councillor Miles Parkinson. Good evening, Councillor Miles Parkinson, Oldham Ward. Thank you. Councillor Joyce Plummer. Good evening, Councillor Joyce Plummer, representing Peel Ward in Accrington. Thank you, Councillor Kath Pratt. Good evening, Councillor Kath Pratt, representing Baxendon Ward. Thank you, Councillor Jeff Scales. Hello, Jeff Scales, representing Richard. Thank you, Councillor Paddy Short. Paddy Short. Councillor Paddy Short, representing Peel Ward, Accrington. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Kate Walsh. Thank you. Councillor Kate Walsh, representing Richard Ward. Thank you, councillors. We can now move on tonight to tonight's main business. Uh, Madam Mayor, can I invite you to introduce item one? Item one. Are there any apologies received? No. There are none, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Are there any declarations or interest of de Declaration, Declaration of Independence in dispensation. No, or oh, Munsi. Councillor Munsi. Yes, down. thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to declare interest on items number six, seven, and eight, as I'm a trustee of Hindman Leisure. It's a personal interest. Thank you. And we also have yeah. Councillor Josh Allen, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest in item 9B of the Capital Look Programme, uh, in particular to works at Huntington and Town Hall and uh, Market Hall. I'd also just like to say on a personal thank you to everyone who wished me their uh, condolences regarding the passing of my mother. Uh, Preview for Christmas. Thank you. Is that it? Thank you. My announcement tonight is starting with a very sad news. I began by offering my sincere condolences to Councillor Marlene Howard on the loss of earlier this week of her son Dale. Marlene has very bravely decided to attend tonight's meeting at this most difficult time. So I will not dwell on this except to say our thoughts and prayers are with you at this very sad time. Donations to the mayoral charity. And again, I'd like to thank the family of former councillor Lisa Allen for their kind donations to the mayoral charity following Lisa's passing on Christmas Eve. The gift will go to help numerous residents in need and my charity this year supports Highburn Hub. Just to say thank you once again, I offer my thanks to council staff, volunteers, NHS, social care and other key workers who have laboured so hard to keep the wheels turning throughout the pandemic and who will continue to do so as we start to get back on our feet. I can now add my thanks to all those who are helping to roll out the vaccine that are our route to recovery. And a week ago, um, Accrington Pass Memorial Service. The Accrington Pals Memorial Service took place at three o'clock last Sunday, the 21st of December, at St John's Evangelist Church, Accrington. The social distance event was held to commemorate the voluntary service held on the same date in 1915, just before the Pals went off to, to train for the war. This year, the Mayor and I chose 
to pay our respects by watching the service online to follow our similar numbers to attend in the COVID secure manner. Are there any announcements from the leader, please? Councillor you Parkinson, you're eyes. on mute. Thank you for that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, can I add my deepest condolences and sympathies uh, to Councillor Marley Nower at this most difficult time? I also want the council to note that over the last year, it's been very difficult for Councillor Haworth. It's not the first loss in, in bereavement. And also following a leader where no leader wants to follow after the uh, loss of the late Councillor Tony Dobson. But for all that trouble, Councillor Marlene Haworth as the leader of the opposition has worked with me through the most difficult time of this council. And I personally thank her for that. And I'll leave it at that. But myself and Bernadette are thinking of you. I now wish to continue on to some other announcements. As you're aware, there's local government reorganisation taking place and there's a local government review reform in Cumbria. That Einbahn don't intend to issue a formal response, as I think it is a matter for Cumbria, as they are the people responsible. So that is simply a brief uh, statement regarding reorganisation in Cumbria and that, that the council intend not to have a formal response, but leave it up to Cumbria to decide their own determination. Following on from that, I wish to respond to a freedom of information request made by Graham Jones of Baxingdon. Due to Graham Jones declaring he is putting himself forward as a potential parliamentary candidate for Hyman, I believe it needs responding to in this public forum. The freedom of information request subject is as follows. Monies paid from Einburn Council accounts to Labour councillors and ex-Labour councillors. Details of your request. Background. I am informed that a considerable sum have been paid from Einburn Council account linked to Einburn Labour Group to Einburn Labour Group and ex-Labour Group members. Three tranches of transactions are suspected, though they may be more. Last December's holiday period, sometime in early 2020, and this December's holiday period, totaling £21,000. Please could provide a list of sums paid, dates and amounts to individual recipients from Ivan Council accounts from the period 2015 to 2020. <coughs> in 2011, the Council implemented all expenditure above £250 to be publicly available. The period of 2015 and 2020 as I will be published in accordance to that. This was before the government brought in legislation in 2014 for all expenditure above £500. Therefore, this council were early adopters and went further than the regulations required. Councillors' claims are made through the Members' Allowance Scheme which are published each year. Council implemented a purchase scheme to save costs in providing IT provision if councillors required provision to carry out councillor prescribed duties, saving the council a substantial amount of money. All claims by councillors between 2015-2020 have or will be published along with the council expenditure above £250. That leaves that answer, Madam Mayor, and that ends my communications. Thank you. Um, announcement from the Chief Executive, please. There are no communications for me uh, this evening, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Confirmation of minutes. I move the minutes and presented as presented as a correct record. Are there any comments on the minutes? 
So we have one hand indicating at the moment from Councillor Sarah Brickcliffe. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and David. I just quickly want to come in by sending my condolences and I'm sure the whole council's condolences to Rachel McClure's, uh, McClure's family from Garland's Floris in Oswald Twistle, who sadly also lost her life last week. So it's just something she uh, did a lot for Oswald Twistle and I thought I should highlight that in this meeting. We have a hand raised from Councillor Nildad Aziz. Apologies, David, my little one's in the background, so my apologies. Can I just draw members' attention to the Skipton to Corn motion that was passed unanimously? No objection was received from any of the Labour group or the opposition Conservative group. Much to my surprise, subsequently, we've had Conservative councillors and Conservative mouthpieces on social media and various different forums deride the idea as a waste of time or not Heimbrun related. I know as a party, we, I know as a party, the Conservatives have shifted to the right. It's attracted interesting characters, but it appears to be attracting individual, individuals that are detached from reality. But my issue is, if Conservative councillors had an issue with that motion, why didn't they speak up? Or for that matter, if they had any other burning issues related to Heimbrun at the previous council meeting, we still had one hour, 25 minutes of the last meeting available by my recommendation to discuss them. So either put your ideas up or get behind the scheme. If you don't have the strength of your conviction to hold your argument to scrutiny, maybe you're in the wrong profession. Good transport links invite people into your area and the town centre. Strong infrastructure has never been a hindrance to economic growth. I know since that meeting, the government has announced investment into the into rail projects with 794 million allocated to rail projects. 760 million have gone into the south between uh, Oxford and Cambridge and only 34 million in the north in Northumberland. And no, nothing for the northwest. And also, latest announcements have been announced that the Transport for North budget is being cut by potentially 40%. So much for the levelling up agenda. That is why we need to speak up and make sure we continue to campaign for this link. Because ultimately, the re-establishment of the Skipton to, to Corn rail link will be a boost to Heimben and its residents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Votes to be taken. Do you all agree with the minutes of the last meeting? Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have yeah. no yeah. objections indicated and therefore the motion is carried. Thank you. Prudential indicators, monitoring and treasury management strategy update. Can I invite portfolio holder resources and introduce this item? Thank you, Joyce Plummer. Seconded by Miles Parkinson. Joyce, you're currently on mute. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move this report. I'll second the report, Madam Mayor, and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. If any councillor wishes to speak, will you now indicate, please? We have no indications, Madam Mayor. Thank you. So are we going to a vote or is it... Um, There's no, no, no reports for noting only, Madam Mayor, so no vote is required. No, no vote is required, no. no. Patrick? Patrick? Uh, yes, can I invite uh, Patrick Short, invite please? Patrick Short, please. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, at the annual budget overview and scrutiny meeting on the 18th of February 2021, the Resources Overview and Scrutiny Committee 
reviewed the revenue and capital budget proposals. Excuse me, by the can, 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 can yeah. um, we are going to invite you as chair of scrutiny to talk to us about the ONS committee. Um, that's not at this item though. So that item five item on the agenda. Item five is reported is for report uh, report of the voting. No votes required. Six prudential indicators monitoring and treasury management and investments strategy two thousand and twenty one to twenty two and twenty three to twenty four. Can I invite the portfolio order for reserves and introduce this item, Councillor Joyce Plummer? Seconded by Miles Park. Thank you, Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move this report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I formally second the report and reserve the right to speak. Once again, if any councillor wishes to speak, please indicate. We have no indications. Madam Mayor, you may move to the vote. Right. Votes will be taken. If any councillor wishes to object, abstain or ask for a recorded vote, please indicate. Once again, we have no indications, Madam Mayor, so the motion is carried and you now move to item seven on your Thank agenda. You. Medium term financial strategy. Can I invite the portfolio order for resources and introduce this item? Councillor Joyce Plummer, second by Miles Parkinson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move this report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I second the report formally and reserve the right to speak. Thank you, councillors. If any councillor wishes to speak on this item, please indicate. No. We have no indications, Madam Mayor. This item does not require a vote, um, no. so you may move on to item eight. General Revenue Budget Council Tax Level Capital Programme 2021 to 22. We may now move into the main budget items. Firstly, we need to agree the procedure to be used tonight. This was circulated yesterday. I will take this procedure as agreed unless any councillors indicate their objections. Madam Mayor, we have no objections indicated. So the procedure is adopted. Can I now invite the leader of the council to briefly introduce this item? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm pleased to be given the opportunity to present the council's revenue and capital budget proposals this evening. And I will be setting these out in some detail in my main budget speech. We have, of course, presented our ideas to the overview and scrutiny. And so before I get into the detail of the budget, I would like to hand over to the chair of overview and scrutiny committee, Councillor Patrick Shaw, to report on the comments and observations of the committee. Thank you, Leader. Paddy, can we invite you now, please, to uh, report back to us on the comments of the overview and scrutiny committee? Thank you, Dave. At the annual budget overview and scrutiny meeting on the 18th of February 2021, the Resources Overview and Scrutiny Committee reviewed the revenue and capital budget proposals submitted by the Leader of the Council. No alternative budgets were proposed. The budget proposals submitted were reviewed and discussed in depth by the Committee, and the following recommendations are submitted to the Council. That Council notes the following resolutions of the Resources Overview and Scrutiny Committee. That the Committee notes the content of the reports related to performance indicators, treasury management and investment strategy for 2021 to 2022, 2023 and 2024. Medium term financial strategy, 2021-22 to 2023-24. General fund revenue budget, 2021-22 and general fund capital budget 21-22. That the committee thanks the leader of the council, the portfolio holder for resources 
and the Leader of the Opposition for their participation in the scrutiny meeting and debate. That the Deputy Chief Executive and all other officers involved be commended for their work in producing the budget. That having reviewed and debated the budget submitted, the committee supports the content of the revenue and capital budget reports as outlined. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Short. Miles, can we now invite you to respond to that, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Can I thank Councillor Short and all the members of Overview and Scrutiny Committee for their comments and the important role they play in shaping the Council's budget. And I think it's important that all budget ideas are subject to the overview and scrutiny before coming to the Council. And it's an essential part of the process that helps maintain the transparency and openness that we all value. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And can we now invite you, Leader, to move the main item of the evening, which is the Council's Revenue and Capital Budgets, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I formally move the Revenue and Capital Budgets for 2021-22. Thank you. And do we have a seconder for that, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I second the budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Leader, can we invite you to present your uh, budget to us, please? Thank you. Firstly, I want to revisit the 2020-21 budget set in the Council Chamber last year, before the onset of the COVID pandemic, which so many families in Eindman have been touched, including members of this Council, in the last 12 months. And our thoughts and condolences are with all those missing, missing a loved one. It is also to note the thanks of this council with the groups and volunteers who came forward in our darkest hour to help one another. Our thanks must go to our NHS staff and all frontline workers caring for our community. I wish to recognise the work of our council staff in all departments, but especially crematorium and cemetery staff, infection control, waste services, call centre, I'm burn up with all the umbrella organisations and volunteers, the financial revenue and benefits staff. Just to highlight, during the past year, the council implemented and delivered numerous business grant schemes on behalf of the government to Einburn businesses, totaling 37 million. In April, recognised nationally in a number 10 Downing Street press conference for swiftly getting grants to businesses in Einburn. Well, the council received additional funding to deal with the effects on residents and the council of 1.5 million. For instance, 127,000 emergency assistance grant and 492,000 from the Community Champions Fund, which was the highest award per head of population in the country, to help those most in need by a host of incredible organisations and volunteers under the umbrella of the Einber Nob. You note before I go on to this year's budget that 2020 and 21 will likely end in an overspend due to the impact of COVID-19. This will be the first time in 18 years that has occurred. As stated at Cabinet, the year end 2020-21, the predicted level of overspend on the budget has fallen to 392,000 from 919,000. Savings on our core expenditure outside of COVID-19 continue to be generated across the Council. The expenditure on COVID continues to be the only reason an overspend is predicted this year. And if the extra costs and damage to the council's income from COVID had not occurred, the forecast for 2020-21 will be a substantial underspend. The overspend may fall still further as we have applied for assistance from government to help Einburn Leisure, which has suffered a significant loss in income this year due to COVID-19. And if this money arrives, it will lower the amount we have set aside 
in the budget forecast to assist directly with additional council funding. We are able to meet this should the required be needed due to the strong financial management over many years and the level of reserves this council owns. I think it is prudent to also mention the outlook for the council and its challenges as stated at Cabinet. COVID-19 has dominated 2020 and 21 and will potentially dominate much, if not all, of 2021-22. The pandemic adds to uncertainty of the financial forecast for the next three years. It was already difficult to predict the Council's financial future due to the government's proposed fair funding review, which is expected to remove revenue support grant funding of 1.5 million as a source of funding for the council and see changes made to how much business rates we are allowed to retain. This creates a big challenge in 2022-23, requiring the council to look to find around 2 million of savings in that year to balance its budget. However, the good news is that if we can achieve this level of saving for that year, the following year, 2023-24, shows a relatively small amount of savings will be needed of 100,000 and going forward this could become norm from that point. Liz does however assume that the council does achieve revenue growth from council tax and business rates in the latter years and if these do not occur and instead flatline as the economy stagnates as a result of COVID-19 the savings pressures on the council could amount to more than 3 million in 2022-23, with a further 1.25 million required the following year. At the opposite end of the spectrum, if the council tax and business rate growth is good and the government does not withdraw all our revenue support grant immediately in 2022-23 or replaces it with other grants, we could be in a position for a few years in which we can operate a surplus budget. The range between the pessimistic and optimistic scenarios is significant at over 5.4 million, reflecting the large amount of uncertainty the Council currently faces due to combination of COVID-19 and the government's financial review of local authority funding. This position around the robustness of the forecast should improve as the year progresses, and we would expect that once the government announces the detail, around new funding levels next December, the ability to plan ahead effectively based on robust figures should be greatly improved. And now moving on to the re revenue budget for 2021-22. Council intends to set a budget for 2021-22 at the same level as for 2020-21 at 11 million 227,000. Council tax revenue is expected to be down as more people switch to claiming financial support, others struggle to pay, but the fall will largely be offset by two one-off grants from government and a 2% increase in council tax. This will see a band D council tax increase from £5 and a penny of the year. And for most properties in Ironburn, which are band A properties, for council tax purposes, the annual increase will be £3.34 pence a year, or less than seven pence per week. Business rates income is expected to be almost exactly the same as last year, though this might fluctuate in year if the recovery from COVID-19 proves difficult for the local economy. The decision by government not to end the payment of revenue support grant this year has significantly assisted the council by providing 1.5 million of funding we were expecting to lose. A major assumption in the budget is that any additional costs falling on the council due to COVID-19 or any lost income from the pandemic is funded by government. They have initially provided a one-off COVID grant for 2021-22 of 592,000. This looked potentially su sufficient when it was announced in mid-December, as it seemed at that point the virus was on its way out. However, the resurgence of the pandemic in the final few days before Christmas 
and the likelihood of that measures to contain the virus will need to continue until the summer or beyond, now potentially indicate that 592,000 may not be enough. Decisions on how to allocate this additional grant will be made in March and early April, when we better understand the potential calls on this money. It is likely that it will be designated to help finance the work of Ivan O in protecting and supporting those struggling with the crisis. To help meet the extra costs incurred by the council around supporting the national effort around combating the virus through track and trace and enforcement work, helping to cover the gloss of income the council faces due to COVID-19 and assisting Ivan Leisure as it rebuilds its customer base. It is likely that 2021-22 will be a tough financial year for the council and it may be the case that the cost pressures we face because of COVID will not all be met by government and that overspend decision may emerge in such circumstances. However, we would expect to be able to manage this within the overall financial position of the council. Given our levels of reserves, we should be able to cope with such pressures. I wish to cover some major areas the council will start delivering in 2021-22, which will have a direct positive effect on Einburn and budget outturns in the, into the future. Coming forward in 2021, local plan under Regulation 18 draft core strategy consult on housing and employment sites in May of June 21. Then Council's publication version of the local plan under Regulation 19 consult November December 21. Why is this important? The Council's vision of driving growth and prosperity. Employment and housing growth are central to Ivan's Council's vision for a borough the development of a sustainable, strong, local and improved access to job markets across Pennine, Lancashire and wider northern region is fundamental for the long term prosperity of the borough. Central to achieving this is a transformational change in the economy and productivity, including local output. In delivering this vision, the Council is seeking sustainable population growth, including working households, for a combination of housing and employment growth. This will be underpinned by a review of the local plan due to be completed in 2023, which will identify for that plan period of up to 200 to 2036, at least 68.7 hectares of new employment land and land for at least 4,320 new homes equivalent to an average of 216 new homes per year. Einburn is perfectly located adjacent to the main Pennine Lancashire crossroads, where the M65 meets the A56 and the M56 route at Junction 8 of the M65. This means Einburn fully benefits from the potential of the M65 car growth corridor, with access to key growth sites at Junction 6 to 8 on the M65. At Junction 6, the new employment opportunities are being created at the Premier Frontier Park employment zone, with the final phase now under construction, where approximately 1 million square feet of logistics and manufacturing units of various sizes are provided. An Hampton by Hilton Hotel Banquet and Conferencing Centre also. At Junction 8, the Council will finalise a master plan for a new garden village adjacent to the existing Uncourt village, which will provide up to 2,000 new modern high quality homes over the next 10 to 15 years in a fabulous countryside location with excellent access to the motorway and rail networks. Acklington Town Centre is an important part of Einburn's economy and in response to changes in the high street, the council is working on a new town centre plan with key stakeholders to include an emphasis on town centre population growth, further restoration of the heritage buildings, including links to Ivan's industrial heritage and arts offer, further public realm improvements, and a focus on independent shopping together with improved car and public transport access. Longer term economic growth priorities include 
support for the improved rail and road connections from Pennine, Lancashire to Yorkshire, and the potential for a rail freight terminal on the site of the rail sidings served from the former Uncourt power station site. Funding bids in coming months to government will be made to the levelling up fund, which covers economic recovery, especially local infrastructure, a fund of some four billion. The National Home Building Fund for housing growth totalling 7.1 billion. UK Share Prosperity Fund skills and transport employment, etc. at 220 million to bid into with shovel ready Einburn projects. Additionally, through the Lancashire Business Recovery Fund, bids totalling 1 million and 95,000 with 600,000 match funded by Einburn have been made for. Orphan Business Park Master Plan, Orphan Business Park Canal Accessibility Scheme, Whitebird Business Area Canal Accessibility Scheme, Accrington Town Centre Parking Initiative, Accrington Town Centre Gateway Initiative, Uncourt Garden Village Junction Improvement, Uncourt Railway Station Parking Scheme. Recovery is key for our businesses and town centres due to the effects of COVID. I announced previously 150,000 allocation to engage with key stakeholders on priorities. Receiving feedback from all quarters, the following will be acted upon. For business recovery and development, pulling together all the resources the Council can offer it out to a single point of contact of an economic development unit to drive business development and understand the business problems and work to resolve in partnership, driving employment in Einburn. Senior officers of the council will look how we can develop our economic development capacity. Secondly, funding a borough-wide place-based recovery strategy for our town centres of an allocation of 150,000 with the ability to source external expert support working with all to address the changing nature of our town centres to submit a plan. We've also helped from the High Street Task Force to government for funding. Starting with Accrington, then following with Ozzeltwistle, Grey Tarwood and Rishton being our other primary shopping high streets in the borough. I now move on into investing in health of Einburn. As you're aware, a portal online is available to look at the transformational investment in Ivan Leisure provision coming forward. Not since the formation of the Council in 1974 and Ivan Leisure Centre has the leisure portfolio seen this sort of investment of 10 million. Upgrading, refurbishing and new provisions across Ivan with public consultation, including the repurposing of Mercer Hall for a future use. Einburn Council has been successful in being awarded two million from the Public Sector Decarbonised Fund. I wish to inform Council emergency powers have been taken in order to meet government deadlines and ensure we didn't jeopardise receipt of this grant. The major building receiving the most benefit from this funding is Einburn Leisure Centre, but also keeping to the Council's green agenda by fitting the latest technology of airflow energy pumps which will reduce the carbon emitted from the leisure centre by 74%. We've also set aside capital grants each year for the replacement boilers. Currently, that fund stands at 850,000. And with a further contribution in 2022-23, will be 1 million to use across the leisure portfolio. Now for further investment. Irrespective of the funding bids to Sports England or other bodies, this transformational agenda is outlined in the next 36 months. Phase 1, 2021, Community Hub Development, Clayton Moore's Civic Hall. Carbon Reduction, Einburn Leisure Centre. Application, Sport England Strategic Facility Fund. Community Engagement commences to identify a vision for the future of Mercer Hall Leisure Centre. Phase two, 2022, new Clayton Moore's Leisure Centre facility build commences. 
Community of Development, Bank Mill House. Einburn Academy Development, subject to funding. Agree a vision for the future of Mercer Hall Leisure Centre and progress funding applications. Phase three in 2023, new Clayton Moores facility opens, refurbishment of Einburn Leisure Centre, community of development, Ozzle Twistle West End. List completes 36 months of a transformational investment for leisure provision in Einburn. Linked to the green agenda, reducing the carbon footprint of council buildings, whether at Einburn Leisure Centre, Scarecliff House, council offices and the crematorium. The council additionally will, by April of next year, all its small vehicles will be all electric, while continuing to plant trees and look for locations for new woodland in Ironman to be created, to deliver on the council's plan in coming years to be carbon neutral. I now move on to the capital budget for 2021-22. This year, the programme will be 2.3 million and funding from existing resources and external support. It will continue our previous commitment to continue to invest in services and improvements in our buildings and infrastructures, while avoiding the need to finance by borrowing. The biggest item this year will again be almost £1 million to assist those who are disabled or with other medical conditions to continue to live in their own homes by providing grants to them to adapt their properties so they can maintain their independence for as long as possible and live where they have always done so. There is also money to upgrade the Council's core customer service system to better improve and widen the range of services that can provide to the public directly via the internet. Significantly, additional funds are also provided to allow work to be undertaken on the fabric of Accrington Town Hall and Accrington Market Hall to stop these buildings from deteriorating and to ensure they are effectively maintained and preserved for future generations. There are also funds to invest in our leisure buildings to modernise and improve, as well as enhance the facilities for users of these buildings. Various other projects to improve our accommodation are also listed, along with a number of other smaller projects this year. That concludes a transformational agenda under the most difficult of circumstances in local government terms since 1945. But like a new dawn, as in 1945, this council is ready to deliver on the promise which the government made to level up. For Einburn to deliver it, it's now for the government to honour its pledge for the North and the left behind places such as East Lancashire and Einburn. Government, we are waiting and ready. Honour your pledge to the people of Einburn and level up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That concludes my budget speech. Thank you, Miles. Uh, so, Madam Mayor, we now have had presented to the Council the controlling group's proposals for the revenue and the capital budget for the year ahead. Um, this is one item on the Council's agenda this evening, but helpfully we have two reports um, that break this down firstly into the revenue account and secondly into the capital account. We have notice from the opposition part, the main opposition party on the council, that they uh, have some alternative suggestions that they would like to put to the council by way of an amendment. And for clarity, we will take these in turn. Firstly, by hearing, debating and voting upon the ideas that come forward in relation to the revenue position. And secondly, by following the same procedure for the parts of the amendment that relate to the capital program. Once we've done that, um, subject to the voting, there will be an opportunity to return to the substantive motion, uh, depending, as I say, on, on the votes that, that uh, are cast once the amendment is discussed. So in relation to the first of those, uh, then um, we would now invite the leader of the opposition Conservative Party on the councillor, council, councillor Marlene Howarth, to uh, propose her amendments as they relate to the revenue position of the council. Marlene, please. Thank you, David. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Before I start, can I just say thank you 
so much to all of you for the uh, kind messages and uh, sympathies that I've received. It's really heartwarming to know that I have so many friends who, who care. Uh, to carry on with the budget, Madam Mayor, as you know, the Conservative group have for many years supported Labour budgets in this chamber. And I would have hoped that after the year this country has suffered, that we could have also supported Labour this year. Unfortunately, the budget that has been put in front of us is not a budget that we can support. It's a budget with no vision, no strategy, and most importantly, no support for the residents who have gone through the, some of the toughest times in over a century. Before the 19 COVID country, our borough was already the back foot. We have high rates of childhood poverty, infant mortality, obesity, high employment rates where one in four have a dependency on government assistance. And since the pandemic, things have only got worse. This budget does nothing to address the issues that we had before the pandemic, let alone a plan for what we should do for the residents as we move back into normality. We know that the furlough scheme that the Conservative government introduced has helped thousands in Hyburn. The small business grants have been there to support them when they have not been able to trade. And the Eat Out to Help Out scheme helped to support our hospitality industry. But councils are here to be the caretakers of our local area and to drive aspiration of our residents, to plan housing, to look after residents' well-being and to plan for the future. This budget does none of that. The budget is lacking imagination, lacking investment, and most importantly, offers no support to our residents. Madam Mayor, the Conservative group wants to put on record also our thanks to every single employee of this council. They've done a tremendous job working closely with all the agencies involved with dealing with the pandemic, and we really do take our hats off to them. We also acknowledge that the volunteers in our borough and some thousands of key workers have played a massive part in keeping us safe. But residents that have been forced to stay at home have struggled with their mental health and our children have lost months of education. We are therefore very concerned that Labour are looking towards increasing council tax. We all know that council tax in this area is higher than the Ribble Valley. Around 68 of the borough are in band aid properties and by definition struggle each month. Hundreds are already worried that they may not have jobs to go back to. They've already taken a 20% pay cut because they need to stay at home. Raising the council tax will do nothing for this council's budget this year. It only raises £101,000. This year, we accept that council departments have had to look for 10% savings, and they've had to do that year on year since round about 2011. Their jobs have been very difficult, and we accept that to make substantial savings across the council would have been unfair. However, we feel that we have a duty to help our residents, and all we are looking for is an additional 1% saving. 
how do you all think it looks to residents when we are putting up council tax but not providing the support they need? Why are we settling for being seventh best in the country? Why are we not striving to be number one in the country, giving value for money? Where is the plan for the economy? We are expecting job losses when the furlough scheme finishes, yet there is no provision to help our residents if they become employed. We're not talking about benefits. We're talking about advice, guidance, guidance to help them set up their own businesses, guidance to retrain and support them and give them a future. Madam Mayor, as an authority, we have a statutory duty to promote health and well-being. How does this budget do this? It doesn't. It continues to cut the budget to Hyman Ledger. And as a result, Labour are supporting the closure of Mercer Hall Baths. They are hoping that we are successful from, for Wilson's playing fields. That may or may not happen. Madam Mayor, we are in favour of this bid and we hope that it comes off. But we should not be taking a gamble with Mercer Hall. The argument from the controlling group will be that it loses money. We are not a business. We have a social duty to provide leisure facilities in this borough and listen to what residents want, to listen to what residents want and need. And that is what this Conservative group will do. Finally, Madam Mayor, and very importantly, we are all aware of the serious issues relating to mental health in our area, not only with, children, uh, with adults, but children too. In fact, Labour councillors have spoken in council about this on many occasions and have more than once asked government for more money to fund them, yet there is nothing in this budget to support them. Madam Mayor, this Conservative group will support them, as our proposed amendment shows. The Conservative group says support the people of Ironburn and support these amendments, and I move the amendments as outlined. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Marlene. Can I ask, please, if there is a seconder for that amendment? Yes, Dave, I would love to second this and reserve the right to speak, please. Thank you. So we now move to a debate on the this part of the amendment. And the first person to indicate is Councillor Tim O'Kane. Tim, it's nice to see you. No. Nice to see you as well, David. I'll start off with a half a quote from Richard III. A budget, a budget, my kingdom for a budget. What the Conservatives have come up with is just a series of amendments, but there's no, there's no strategy about where the money is going to be uh, coming from. I was suspicious of the uh, amendment as soon as I saw it yesterday. And it, the figure which is quoted has not been in any uh, budget documents that the overview and scrutiny have, have looked at. <coughs> but I thought uh, I, re I recommend I could remember where I'd uh, got it from. And I also sit on the council's audit committee. And lo and behold, there it is in the audit committee, a figure of 19 million. But this was the 31st of March last year. So they're trying to, they're trying to use figures based 
on something which is almost a year old with a pandemic thrown in. Now, earmark reserves, which is what they're basically uh, saying they're going to ra uh, raid, well, they're the kind of the glue that holds together our midterm financial strategy. Now, Joe McIntyre is, is a great guy and he's doing a, a, an excellent job with our finances. How he does it year on, year out, I, I, I don't know. But it's the, it's the trick which he's trying to do year on year. He doesn't know how much the government is going to cut the funding. And he doesn't know how much the, uh, the fair funding is going to be uh, cut. He's got to give a guess. But even so, he comes up with the, uh, this figure year on year, and we still manage to keep the reserves as a manageable uh, thing. This is a, a complete joke. Now, I wouldn't like to suggest that the uh, Conservative group are as thick as bricks, but surely, surely one of them, if it, you know, there's only, there's only a, like a handful there, why can't they come up with something which adds up? And at that stage, all I can say is, ours is the only budget which adds up. The Conservatives had the right, through the, the overview and scrutiny uh, process, to come up with um, a, a set of ideals. But they chose not to do it. We had um, a question setting uh, thing, at which no Conservatives turned up. At the actual um, budget uh, overview and scrutiny meeting, we did have some suggestions from uh, former uh, Army Conservative uh, Patrick McGinley and from Josh Allen. And I thought that's strange. We had nothing from any other Conservative. So in other words, the only two Conservatives who have been disciplined were the only ones who came up with any questions at the uh, appropriate time. So I can't, I can't, be, I can't be doing with this uh, supposed um, amendment. And I shall be voting for the only one. I've got my doubts uh, about the, uh, the Labour budget as well. I, I would have liked a, a little bit more um, clarification on how much money was going to be spent in Clayton. But if it's the only horse in town, I, that's what I have to go along with. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Tim. Can I now invite Councillor Kate Walsh, please? Thank you, Mr. Wellsby, and thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm really glad that Councillor Howarth has highlighted so many issues that the government failed to invest on year on year, a Conservative government. Uh, councils simply cannot afford to foot this bill any longer, and we need real investment. Our northern towns are left behind, and we need to realise that central government needs to give us real investment. It needs to happen now. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Does any other councillor wish to speak in relation to this amendment? Thank you. We now have a number of hands showing. I'll start by checking um, uh, Madam Mayor's invitation. Dave, would you like to speak at this stage? Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Waldeby. Thank you. OK, thank you. We do now have a number of councillors who have indicated and the first councillor to indicate is councillor Kathleen Pratt. Thank you, Chair. Um, this pandemic, it's not been good for anyone, has it? The worry of losing your job, your home or your loved ones all contribute to mental health problems. 
And it doesn't need me to point out that this will need to be addressed, as well as the physical aspects of it all. A one-off grant for counselling services to help our residents is much needed. And in the greatest scheme of things, it's not out of the question, whatever Tim O'Kane has to say. Existing and new businesses will be needing help beyond money after this lockdown. And the government's done its best, and I'd like to see the Labour government in a position of the Conservative government to do that. For instance, I would love to see an application pack, as suggested by Council Allen, to help businesses along and give them advice and information on how to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Can I now invite Councillor Paul Cox, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I've looked at the Conservative amendments to our budget and I only took a look at them last night. So I don't think they've been properly scrutinised, but that's another argument. But I can see where you're coming from with some of the points you've raised. Yes, we are facing an uncertain future and many will be worse off and we do need to support these people. However, we do differ on a few points of how this can be achieved. If we all look back at page 23, table 3 of the medium term financial strategy, it sets out in plain and simple terms where we are with central government funding to this council. For the benefit of those that haven't got the document to hand, we've lost over £5 million. Instead of asking the council to cut another 1%, should we not be asking the government to give back some of the 72% they have taken off us? To me, it's a simple fix. Yes. If the government supports local authorities, then local authorities will be able to support local residents. Within the amendment, you've also said you want to support growth and create jobs by creating and assisting residents in businesses. Now, as somebody who has started a small business, electrical contracting, and been traded for 17 years, I totally get what you're saying. However, again, would it not be better if, the, if central government was to support businesses such as the Pineburn Enterprise Trust, who are experts in that field and can offer advice to small businesses, start up loans, guide them properly, not the Borough Council. We will assist, we will be an enabler, but we aren't the answer. And finally, and most importantly, you've raised the issue of mental health. And again, we can see how this affects many of us, many of us in this room. However, however I am a firm believer that we have to leave the job to the experts. And as we all know, the experts are the NHS. However, what we do also know is that health spending as a share of GDP remains at its lowest level in a decade. In fact, in the decade since the financial crash, day-to-day -day spending on running our public services as a share of GDP has been slashed to its lowest level since the 1930s. Successive Conservative governments have pursued a self-defeating policy of austerity. And that isn't an attack, it is just a simple fact. A report from the NHS Support Foundation shows that staffing numbers have failed to meet growing demand over the last five years in this field. Since 2013, the number of patients accessing services across England has risen by a third. While the number of doctors has fallen by 2%, the number of nurses by 1%. That analysis was quite startling. In 2013, there was one mental health doctor for every 186 patients. In 2018, this had fallen to one for every 253. There was one mental health nurse for every 29 patients in 2013. By 2018, that was, that was up to 39 patients. What we really need is a fair and sustainable funding settlement for local government that addresses the £5.8 billion pounds of funding that we've been cut and lost and that comes from the Local Government Association, which is cross-party. A, a fair and sustainable funding agreement that addresses a 3.5 billion funding gap in social care. And as I always say, 
what I found about this motion is it raises the right points, but points them and gives them to the wrong people. What you should be doing is looking up the chain, not down the chain. We are trying our best. The residents of Hindon can see what we're doing, can see what we're achieving, but unfortunately, if central government continues on the path that it does, then that will impact us all. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I now move to Nodad Aziz. Nodad. Thank you, Chief Executive, Mr. Welby, and thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing me to speak. The normal protocol for amendments is to bring it through scrutiny, where members from all parties can debate them, understand the rationale, challenge and the rigour of the budget. For what's been presented to me, as I identify, the high Conservatives and the MP think they are above public scrutiny by avoiding submitting this budget amendment to the meeting last week. The Conservatives are advocating a 0% rise tonight. But what has their Conservative administration at Lancashire County Council done? 70% of the council tax that Hyburn residents pay has been set by Lancashire Conservatives. They didn't vote to have a 0% increase and remain the same. They voted to increase by a massive 3.99% against suge uh, suggestions and costed uh, suggestions from the Labour and Liberal opposition. So in the words of our MP, Labour thinks the public are stupid, stupid. I beg to differ. It's her and the Conservative Party that think the residents of Hyndman are stupid by bringing this sham budget and playing to the gallery while hitting hardworking residents hard by a near 4% increase. I don't draw attention to the latest publication by the Treasury, which is available in the Parliamentary Library. The Treasury, the Conservative government's Treasury, had factor, has factored in across the country a 4.4% increase in council tax receipts for the next tax year. The vast majority of this increase is via a council tax increase. So this simply is playing to the gallery to hoodwink the residents of Hyman. This, this it doesn't even stack up. So which uh, position does the Conservative MP and the councillor support? Is it the one she's advocating down at Parliament or the one she's going to vote uh, on tonight? So which is it? I'm, and I again, quote her words. Wouldn't you say the stance you're taking is a bit hypocritical? Quote. I agree and acknowledge that mental health is a massive issue. And I'm going to acknowledge as someone who's had counselling, and I'm not afraid to share that with you, it had significant benefits. And I would encourage anyone who is suffering to seek help as the first step to acknowledge that is the most difficult, but it's the most important step. But mental health services are not dealt by a local district council, but by a proper funded NHS. And have proper structures in place so we identify and have a safety net for those that are suffering. And the £100,000 that you quote, quote for mental health services, it is not even a tip of the iceberg that is required for mental health uh, services. And again, I know that the Conservatives have quoted the Taxpayers Alliance. Members, my fellow colleagues, don't be confused by this grandiose name of it being impartial or transparent. It is a shadowy think tank that refused to, is to even acknowledge how it's funded. And one of its founders includes the Conservative Friends of Russia. Their aim is to make public spending work. Their aim is it to make public spending work better, but to slash it dramatically. One fact 
and one proven fact, 10 years of austerity has hollowed this council. It's, it's reduced the number of staff and simply the council does not have the capacity to do these uh, projects that the Conservative advocate tonight. That's not an excuse, but basic re reality of 10 years of hollowing out by a Conservative government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nordad. Uh, can I now invite Councillor Glenn Harrison, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> uh, the, um, there is no proper scrutiny for this uh, late budget proposal. Um, and for that reason, um, as um, my colleague Councillor Aziz had mentioned, that is something that should have, should have been done first. That proper scrutiny is so that, so that people can simply um, toy with some of the better ideas and, and, and iron out some of the issues. It does seek to address, though, many valid issues within it. However, it just seems to want to address them to the wrong people, um, as opposed to, as Councillor Cox mentioned, going higher up the chain. Some of the things mentioned I agree with, that we do have high rates of child poverty. One would wonder why, then, to extend the free school meals was voted against by our MP Sarah Brickliffe. The Eat Out to Help Out scheme was also mentioned, for example, that was a fantastic scheme, but was then also criticising the very people that accessed the Eat Out to Help scheme, uh, the youth and every other person that actually accessed such a, such a scheme. Moving on to mental health services. As someone that worked in mental health for 18 years, um, I do find this a bit of pill to swallow when services such as Calderstone's NHS Trust, now Mersey Kerr, were shut, closed by the Conservative government. And the only um, person to fight for that, as far as I'm aware, was the former MP Graham Jones at the time, for which I and many of my colleagues who work in that service and live in Heimbin, um, welcomed his interventions. Alas, to no avail, as that service has now been lost, lost forever. So with regards to mental health, uh, with regards to the budget proposals, I agree with the premise of many of the things. I simply do not think that they've gone through the, pre the proper scrutiny. And with regards to mental health, it's always been the Cinderella service. And under a Conservative government has been worse. That's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. And now to Stuart Eaves, please. Stuart. Uh, thank you, Madam Moore, and thank you, David. Uh, well, I've got to say I'm incredulous by this amendment tonight, really. I mean, look at it. We've had 11 years of the most savage, pernicious, punitive, vicious cuts by this government. They have never funded mental health to what it should fully be, and they have failed to do it on a regular basis. So for Ibn Conservatives, to use that as a yardstick to beat as we is rich, to say the least. I would also like to say many of our residents are the same as me, where our main job is min minimum wage. Rishi Sunak has already said that the increases this year Instead of being something circa 50 pence an hour, with a view to making it a £10 an hour wage by 2024, has now been reduced to 19p an hour. This Conservative government doesn't care about the, the residents on minimum wage in Ironburn. It doesn't care about its people. And what's more, levelling up, they don't know the first th meaning of the word. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. I have two more councillors indicating before I bring the leader into sum up. So if there's anybody else that wants to speak, please do uh, indicate. Uh, Councillor Stephen Button, please. Thank you, Mr. Wellsby. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I'll be quite brief because a lot of what uh, I was going to say has been said by some of my uh, Labour colleagues. Um, I won't be supporting this amendment. Um, I do find it incredulous that um, 
not only does he not bring um, a budget to be scrutinised as is tabled on the agenda for the scrutiny every year, so it gives the us a chance to actually um, critique, critique it, but also for them to get advice from um, such as the Deputy Chief Executive Joe McIntyre, who would have told them that some of this, their starting points are, as Tim McCain stated, a year out of date. Um, as we heard from the leader early on in this agenda item, there's been an, uh, an overspend projected Luckily, down to about 392,000 from a potential 900,000. So, like I said, the starting point they're using for reserves, it, it's just out of date. So, I won't be supporting this amendment. I know which budget I'll be supporting, one that's been properly costed out and um, is basically being put forward in the best interests of the residents with what we've got to play with because we are still being subjected to austerity measures after all this time. Thank you. Many thanks, Stephen. Can I now invite Councillor Patrick McGinley. Patrick. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and, and Mr Wellsby. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, Miles Parkinson's long overall future vision, I thought was actually very, very good indeed. I also thought that Marlene Howarth, uh, the, the opposition leader, made some really good, serious comments. And in fact, some of you Labour members present uh, either agreed or partially agreed with some of them. I know the blame game came into it, but uh, if I can please refer briefly to the capital programme. Uh, Marlene Howarth was talking about having some extra cash for emergencies this year which it would have been an excellent idea for coming out of COVID to help our local people, local business people. My friend uh, Patrick Short and I have had some very interesting, and we are friends, and we've had some very stimulating conversations uh, about the capital programme because there's a certain smugness to it in the sense that uh, the internal team at, uh, at HPC come up with a list of exactly 20 things they allocate the monies. One of the things I said to Paddy straight away was, why is this put forward almost as a fait accompli? There should have been a one-page report about each item justifying the claims, in my opinion, for the individual monies and explain what work was needed and what was going to be done. Um, and I, I thought there should be some discussion prior to these meetings uh, by all parties. Now, Obviously, my objections, and there were quite a lot, as Paddy would tell you, only mainly to the amounts allocated. When we look at like £300,000 for the Town Hall and Eppington Market Hall, in my heart, I'm convinced that can be reduced. 46000 for the Hayworth Art Lighting. And I, I might have sounded suggested, sorry, sarcastic, when I said uh, chandeliers. But you'll never get that money back in a million years. Now, is it going to add to, to a wedding value? Mercer Hall, Forecourt, refurbishment, we've discussed that. It's certainly not needed this year. Uh, the 250000 on Microsoft Dynamics. Do we, do we spend a fortune every year on updating our computer systems? And I could go through more, but the point I want to make is I suggested that we the, it shouldn't cost the one3 million pounds of our monies, we could perhaps get it down to three quarters of a million. And then Miles and his teams would have some extra uh, for, for other things during the year, which could include the opposition if you work together. So that's my main point. Uh, and Paddy's team approved absolutely everything without changing a penny, which bad, sadly makes you think it's all in effect a waste of time because it's a foregone conclusion what's going to happen. Not one penny considered for deduction, not even the forecourt at Mercer Hall, which definitely isn't necessary this year. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. My final comment is obviously owing to some technical hitch, I didn't receive the Conservative amendments, so I can only go on what Marlene Howarth has said tonight. But thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Patrick. Can I move now to Melissa Fisher? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
Um, first of all, I would like to say, um, you know, and thank you to, to Councillor Howarth tonight for having the bravery to, to speak at this council meeting under what must be horrendous circumstances. However, um, whilst I can appreciate some of the points that she has raised, what I fail to understand is how the leader of the opposition can in one breath thank the council officers and staff for everything that they've done in this pandemic and then bring to this council meeting the fact that Heimburn um, Labour run council is not doing anything for residents. It just didn't make sense. It was an almost hypocritical question. Wh which is it, Councillor Howarth? Do you thank the officers or are you saying that we're not doing anything for, for Hyman residents. It just doesn't make sense to me. And given the current circumstances, and like you've mentioned, everybody is suffering at the moment. And, you know, we all have our own individual issues ongoing. Um, but which is it, Councillor Howarth? Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Can I move now, please, to Sarah Brickcliffe? Thank you, David. Um, can I just clarify that we are going to have the opportunity to discuss um, again, or is this the last time we will have the ability to speak? So we're debating firstly the parts of the Conservative amendment that relate to the revenue account. We will then move to debate the parts of the amendment that relate to the capital account. And in the event that those amendments are defeated, we would then return to the substantive motion. So I can't give you a definitive answer. I can tell you that in the event that those amendments are defeated, then we would move back to the controlling group's motion. Thank you very much. Well, I just want to take this opportunity to, to talk about the amendments that we have put forward. And whilst we've had many of the Labour councillors saying that these um, aren't achievable, it was actually confirmed by the, the the finance officer at Highburn Council that they are achievable and to my knowledge it's the fact that a full budget would need to come to scrutiny and not the amendments and this is this is the way it can go forward so to criticise that and I also I think it was Councillor Aziz that criticised the taxpayers alone uh, um, I'm sure this council has always boasted about them for years and, and relied on them for some of their quotes so I, I do think I, I needed to just question that. These are friendly amendments being put forward for our residents of Hindburn and we want, with the mental health aspect, this will be cut, put to charities so that we can support them in finding counselling services which we all need. It is spoken about in the Chamber a lot and this is something that we want to put forward to achieve. So it's just a couple of points on that and, and also the council tax. Again, the finance uh, officer at Highburn Council said this was achievable. So to say that we haven't actually looked into this in detail is not true. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Can I now move to Councillor Paddy Short? Paddy. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, just quick, uh, a couple of quick points. Um, obviously, as, as Chair of Scrutiny, um, I'll be honest, um, I, I welcome the questions from Pat, Patrick McGinley. Um, and from Josh Allen. Um, it's always good. I mean, that's our job. It's a cross-party committee that receives the budget or alternative budget or recommendations. And we look closely at it with the officers of the council and we, we see the positives and negatives and then we make a decision. Now, obviously, I was dis disappointed that we never received a, a full alternative budget from the Conservatives, but I shouldn't have been surprised because um, as since I've been a councillor, we've never got one. Um, and I know I know they may make the point, and it's a valid point, is that if they put a, a full a full budget towards the council, because Labour is a controlling party, it won't pass. But and, and and I agree with that, I understand that. But I think they're missing the point. The point is not about them putting a budget that we can vote down. The point is is the alternative budget allows the residents of Hindburn to see the plans and vision of the cons local Conservative Party if they were in power. Now, either, because they've never done one, either they have no vision and no plans to the residents of, uh, of Hindburn. And, and I don't understand why they haven't put a full, uh, a full alternative budget um, in the last five years. You know, and, and that's up to the people of, of Hindburn to judge themselves. You know, they, they don't have a choice. 
They know what we stand for and what we will do for this council, but they don't know what the Conservatives will do. Um, so, I mean, that is a very valid point. I think people need to think about that. Um, the, the second quick point is that, you know, um, the Conservatives talk about um, the poverty within Hindburn. You know, the poverty in Hindburn has, you know, was there before this before this uh, pandemic. It's been there for the last 10 years. Why? Because the Conservative Party central government have cut the council the council's income by one third. Yet even though they've cut it massively by one third, this council has still managed to protect the frontline services, to be in a good budget position. There is many, many councils out there, and you only look at our Google on the internet, even conservative councils, county and district, who are struggling to keep their head above water, who are talking about bankruptcy, you know, Hampshire into administration. You know, th th this is this is what's happened. Yet we, as a Labour-controlled council, have managed to keep a good level play budget playing field. We've also been able to keep some money by, all right, which other councils are massively in debt. So we should remember that. We should remember over the last 10 years of massive cuts, this council has been run on a very, very good financial level. Thank you. Thank you, Paddy. And we have Dave Parkins indicating. Dave. Thank you, Mr. Wellsby. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'm just uh, going to relate to what the Councillor Parkinson said about the uh, investment on Junction 6, 7 and 8. I just want the people of Huncourt to know that they haven't been forgotten. I know it's 10 to 15 years onwards from the Garden Village but we need much investment in Huncourt. Uh, I went on the pit top of Altham Lane yesterday with Councillor Lorraine Cox and a resident because there was somebody digging up and, and it was on Facebook. Holy hell let loose actually on the Facebook. Uh, after the site visit, we spoke, we spoke to uh, a few of the workers. Uh, Councillor Cox kindly contacted the relevant officers of Ironman Borough Council it's it's private land. Uh, the council didn't even know that these people were doing these investigatory uh, things. What they were doing, they were they were drilling holes. They were a digger on. They were they didn't even know where the pit pit head were. So, but I, I'm the the main thing is that the people of Uncourt haven't been forgotten. They haven't honestly, and I'll do all my in, my, in all my power to. Uh, to bring this uh, garden village forward and let's get the right investment into Hong Kong because we, we're the we're the lonely guy at the moment. So I know it's going to be 10 to 15 years time. I might not be here. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, Hong Kong will be, will be a better place to live and work. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Chairman. You Thank you, Dave. Um, we now have Abdul Khan indicating. Thank you, David. Thank you, Madam Mayor. After 11 years, 10 or 11 years of not uh, putting a budget forward, an amendment for a, a, even a, a thoughtful vote, I'm not surprised with the timing of this amendment, to be honest. Uh, Marlene says uh, Labour proposed budget is not resident friendly. If I was to agree with this, can she explain the proposed increase by the Lancashire County Council of £46.59? It's obviously not a Labour Party uh, increase, it's a, it's a Conservative Party. Why are they doing that if Heinburn's proposed budget is uh, not resident friendly? Thank you, Abdul. I'm now going to call on the Leader of the Council, Councillor Miles Parkinson, to respond to the amendment that's put, and that will draw this part of the debate to a close. <coughs> Councillor Miles Parkinson. Thank you very much. I'm going to respond to the formal correspondence which was circulated with the formal amendments too, which was circulated yesterday at 
about 5 p.m. on the revenue amendment. We all acknowledge the funding from government, but also acknowledge that there is still a difficult path ahead for many residents, businesses and the council. I am pleased you do state, according to the Taxpayers Alliance, this council is in the top seven of councils for value for money and also having a track record of below inflation rises for a long period of time. The medium term financial strategy outlines the great uncertainty going forward. Even after the council paid off all its short term loans and making savings of up to date of 5.4 million due to the reductions of local government grant. It's that uncertainty of the final 1.5 million local government grant and the general economy that makes it prudent to propose an increase similar to last year of £5, but only increasing by one penny to £5 and a penny. And for most properties in Band A, that rise of 7p a week. I believe I have covered the development of the Economic Development Unit in my budget speech with the current fragmented provision across council departments that senior management will come forward with proposals to give the council addressing capacity with a go-to point for all business issues. I acknowledge residents' wellbeing and with partner organisations and the admin up, this is an item through the Council's successful bid to the Community Champions Fund on behalf of Ibernub and the many umbrella organisations to make those links. That concludes response to Councillor Aweth. I just want to briefly comment uh, and assure my colleague in Clayton Moores that the investment in the budget is for a community of repurposing the Civic Hall in Clayton Moors. It's about investment and that investment is the same for Mercer Hall. We're not walking away, we're not knocking down, we are repurposing and that is a choice for residents of Great Howard and the users. It's about renewing and we've done a proud record on many buildings. We don't leave them derelict the council moves forward with partners. Now, of course, there also will be a new leisure centre in Clayton Moors, which will be a multi million pound development. In my 25 years, I haven't seen that sort of investment in Clayton Moors, apart from our marvellous industrial estates, whether at Oldham, a GEC, which gives so much of their business rates nationally to government, and we just need a bigger share of that back to invest in this borough. On Patrick, Councillor McGinley, most of these issues I'll address within the capital amendments being proposed, as there were mostly uh, capital questions. But I do say to him, yes, by all means, when we're back to normality, I welcome him to run up the stairs and put his suggestions on the whiteboard. And of course, next year, there will be that list and he will be able to judge them. That concludes uh, most of uh, my revenue statement on the proposed Conservative amendment. Thank you, Miles. So at this stage, we'd like to take your views, Council, on the amendment that's been proposed by the Conservative group as it relates to the revenue position. In order to save time. It, it is a requirement of the budget meeting that we take a vote that records the, in, the, the votes of every single councillor and that is recorded. Um, what I'm going to do, however, is to see if it's possible to move progress by doing that on block. So if you are a Conservative group member, and I'm only talking to the Conservative group members at this stage, if you are a Conservative group member, and you do not wish to support your leader's amendment, please indicate. If you do not indicate, the record will show that you voted in favour of the Conservative Group amendment.
So I'm speaking now to the Conservative Group members. If you do not wish to support your leader's amendment, please let us know. Thank you. We have no indications for Conservative Group members, so the record will show that each of you voted in favour of Marlene's amendment. I'm now going to address the Labour Group members. If you are a member of the Labour Group and you do not wish to vote against the Conservative amendment, please indicate. If you do not indicate, the record will show that you voted against the opposition group's amendment. Does anybody wish to indicate? No. Thank you. So we have no indications. So the record will show that each of you voted against the amendment that was put forward by Councillor Marlene Howarth. We also, of course, have an independent councillor on the council, Councillor Patrick McGinley. Patrick, please will you tell us whether you wish your vote to be cast in favour of the Conservative Group Amendment on the revenue side or against, please? Or uh, would you like yeah. to abstain? I would like to abstain on the grounds that the only facts I've heard about it were from Marlene tonight for some technical reason. I didn't get the papers yesterday, so in fairness to all, I will abstain. Patrick, thank you. Your vote is recorded as an abstention. Um, so uh, uh, by virtue of the votes that have been cast, the amendment is rejected. I'm now going to invite Councillor Marlene Howarth to put forward her amendment as it relates to the capital programme elements of the budget. Marlene. Thank you, David. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the capital budget is the budget where this council can make real change to the lives of residents and, and businesses in our borough. We have far more spending power here than, than we do with the uh, revenue budget. This year, Labour are carrying on with the market hall and town hall spending. Uh, whilst we understand that we, we do have a statutory duty to maintain these buildings, we believe that some of the work could be deferred till next year and the saving used to benefit other areas in the borough. Why are we not spending on our townships? Why are we not putting back the prow, the pride into our towns, such as Clayton, Limours and Rishton? Labour seems to have forgotten them. Well, this Conservative group hasn't, as our suggested amendment shows. Also, why are we spending so much capital on reorganising the reception area at Scathliff House? COVID will not be with us forever. So we believe that a much more modified plan could be used at half the cost, again, leaving some capital to invest in our township, our, our townships. Um, Heinburn Borough Council has for many years spent significant amount of its capital grant on maintaining and improving the council's own assets. This has come at the expense of many of the outer towns where external funding has been relied on to fund the majority of, of their improvements. The council has also for many years attempted to and has on occasion been successful in disposing of its assets to help make savings on the revenue budget and also to promote house building across the borough. Lyndon Plainfields in Great Harwood was disposed of, generating in excess of 2.3 million for the council. And a commitment was made at that time by the leading group that the majority of this money would be reinvesting 
reinvested into Great Harwood. Uh, and uh, that is why we would support the Leisure Trust with a £1 million uh, grant taken from the sale of Lyndon Playing Fields to be invested into Mercer Hall Baths and to remedy the ongoing issues there, also to provide disabled access um, so that the mobility issues in the area can enjoy the health benefits that any low impact um, exercise provides. We also will be guided by the residents' wishes following whatever consultation takes uh, place. This money would initially need to be taken from the council's capital reserves, being replaced when the receipts of the land sale have been received. For several years, this council has used a substantial proportion of its capital budget to invest in the area of Blackburn Road and the Town Hall and the Town Hall Square. This comes again at the expense of the other townships in the borough. This year sees the majority of the capital budget, which has been provided by Conservative-controlled LCC for disabled ad adapt adaptation. Grants from them totaled £965,897, with Hyman Borough Council putting into the capital grants £322,717, which is once again predominantly being spent on maintaining and improving council assets, with little being spent on the outer townships, again, like Rishton and Clayton Limores. That is why this council, uh, the Conservative group, sorry, are asking to reduce the budgets of the town hall by 50,000 and the market hall by 50,000 and Scathcliff House reception by 50,000 and taking 50,000 from the capital reserves. This will uplift the, the, the uh, balance to 200,000, which we can spend on other projects. Uh, that is really all I can say, except support the people of Einburn. And um, please, don't be hypocrites, support these amendments. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, David. Many thanks, Marlene. Can I now invite Councillor Kathleen Pratt as seconder of that motion, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, I second the motion and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Thank you. So, Council, you've heard the motion. Um, do we have any uh, comments or observations? Please, please indicate. I have. OK, thank you very much. So, um, Councillor Dave Parkins, please. Thank you, Mr. Alsby. Uh, I'd just like to know that uh, they come with two hundred thousand, whatever. But what projects are they planning with the money in Clayton and uh, Rishton? Have they have they had a specification? Have they have they thought about what wants to be done, whatever? So I'd just like to know what they plan on spending this uh, this money on. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And next, I have Jeff Scales. Jeff. Hi, thanks. Thanks, uh, David. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll be brutally honest, probably too honest, but as I'm only about to the end of April, I probably haven't got that much to lose, uh, really. Um, I did actually turn up tonight intending to vote for the amendment because I do think there's been a lack of focus upon Rishton's village centre 
and a number of other townships in a in an over focus on on Accrington town centre in comparison, if I'm honest. Um, and particularly because, you know, as we've seen in Richton and a number of the other townships, the area has been deteriorating and it's starved. It's, it, it feels like it's been starved of any kind of plan or focus or investment in recent years. But hearing Miles speak tonight when he introduced the budget and he made that commitment to start with Accrington and, and expand you know, the, the scope of town centre regeneration to the outlying townships gave me some, uh, so hope, some hope. So, so I've been seduced and, you know, I, I do believe that commitment. Um, but I do want more clarity on that proposal. I do want, I do want meat on the bones because I have got sympathy with the motion. Um, and it is something which I've kind of been slightly frustrated about since I've been um, a councillor. And we have seen a decline in Richton. I've had offices out, I've had councillors out, you know, and I've tried to kind of emphasise the extent of which we've seen the kind of environment in the town that's going to deteriorate over time. And, and I suppose why my tone isn't overwhelmingly positive is, is at the minutes of the scooter committee, when I asked that same question and made the point, it was pretty... Was, seemed to be pretty dismissive, just a kind of rejection out of hand. But hearing what I heard tonight, uh, it gave me hope. Um, I'm not going to be about, about as a councillor after April to keep annoying and bugging uh, cabinet members and a leader about this. But having that commitment made tonight for more focus on, on North Townships like Michigan has given me um, uh, a lot of hope. And to be clear, I don't view this as a cap in hand, as a request for a handout. There's, there's real potential for a, a renaissance in these local high streets. And I think they're looking like a lot better prospect than Accrington Town Centre, if I'm honest. We've seen recovery and regeneration and real creativity in the retail offer starting to happen in Great, Great Harwood. Um, as people start to value the local, and I think the same could happen in Richton and other townships. I just think we need a plan for these places. We need a focus on these places, and we can't rule out investing in those places. But there is a big issue with, you know, what we own and what we don't own anymore. And this tension about giving money to, to property and investing in property that the council. Um, don't own, but there's lots of precedents for doing this. Every single town centre regeneration scheme involves, you know, making deals and using public sector investment to leave uh, investment by others. So we can't look at it from such a basic point of view. We have to get creative. We have to recognise that these areas are a priority. And I'm just hoping but we can follow through on this commitment and not to wait till we run down the list of let's do Accrington first, then let's do Great Hour, then let's do Clayton. And I think the order it was read out was wished to was last on the list. You know, we can do more, more than one thing at once. So it's just a plea. You know, I'll be voting against this amendment because I think it's a nothing more than a, an attempt to pull it a trap. And I also think there's a deep irony that the the government which has made the cuts, which have made these decisions so difficult, are actually putting it forward. So I won't be voting for it. I've got sympathy with the sentiment. Um, but I am very, very encouraged about the commitment that Miles made tonight when he introduced the budget. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Can I now invite Councillor Tim O'Kane, please? Right, well, I'll start off as I did for the uh, revenue budget. A budget, a budget, my kingdom for a budget. Where is it? Show us the money. If you come with, an, with a, uh, a budget proposal that doesn't add up, it's not a budget proposal. 
Now, I never thought that I would be happy to turn down a concert, but, you know, anybody wanting to put £75,000 into Clayton. But there's no plan for spending £75,000. It's a, it, it's just missed. The whole thing is just something to get the Conservatives through this budget process. It's an absolute sham. And I no more believe a Conservative proposal to give money coming from the current incumbents in, in Hindburn, it just doesn't cut it with me. So I'm going to be voting against this, as anybody with any sense will be doing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Tim. And on to Jean Battle, please. Jean. Thank you. Um, the Conservative budget or amendment doesn't really um, for us to vote on. I've been on this council since 1990. I remember the Liberal Democrats, one Liberal Democrat, putting a full budget in front of the council. And she did it year after year after year. She didn't put amendments, she put a full, a full budget. I'd be interested to see where you will manage to spend 200,000 and make, a de make something um, to look at and say, e God, that's great. You keep talking about townships, Clayton and Richton. I represent a township, church. Just in case you've all forgot where it is, it's just on the boundaries of Ozzel Twistle. Nothing gets spent there. You'll see an old building fall into bits on the main road. Um, been like that for 25 years. It gradually, it'll disappear into the canal, I hope. Now, talking about the shop fronts, we did get some shop fronts because we got the Phoenix project and we got millions of pounds. We demolished most of West Accrington. Some of the money's gone into um, Barnfield, just some of the houses up there. And that was done through government money. It wasn't done through council. We couldn't afford to do it. It was absolutely millions of pounds, but it made a big, big investment. And that is what we, as a council, have to look at. Where do we get the equivalent amount of money to make an investment into all our townships, including church? And I'm, I get fed up of listening to Rishton and Clayton as if they're the only ones that exist. We exist, we've got a good population in church and we all work together. So if we could get some money, yet again off the government who provided the Phoenix project money, it would be great. It would be great for every township within Hyambroom. But I can't see that happening at the present time. And £200,000, probably just do a shop front up. I'm sorry, Marlene, I can't agree with your budget. Thank you, Jean. May I now invite Councillor Chris Knight. Chris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wellsby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to echo some of the comments that, uh, that Councillors uh, Jeff and Jean have both made. Uh, speaking on behalf of Oswald Twistle, uh, I was quite hopeful um, when Miles gave his opening speech uh, that we're not forgotten either. Uh, as, as Jean's a councillor for church, Church and Oswald Twistle, uh, church being our nearest neighbours, uh, we we both need uh, investment. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, the investment and the maintenance for Accrington Town Hall and the market seems like quite a bit of money, but those kind of investments do need to continue to be spent. Oswald Twistle Civic Theatre is a fantastic resource for the town, uh, but it's an old council building and it needs money spending on it from time to time. If we stop spending money on all our other council assets, the costs will be exorbitant. 
in the future. So, so what we're looking at with Highburn's capital, uh, with the Labour Party's capital programme is a costed out budget. Uh, so I won't be supporting any amendments to it. Thank you. Many thanks, Chris. Can I move now to Councillor Munsif Dad? Munsif, please. Thank you, David, and thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I will not be supporting the uh, the Conservative uh, proposal for an amendment. Um, the reason being that is because um, it's just an amendment to, of a wish list, basically. Uh, no costings, no direction where the money or is, is, is going to be spent on. And they're just uh, looking to splash some money on Mercer Hall. And I'll just give them a, a bit of background about Mercer Hall and where we've come through at the moment. Despite best efforts, there are still backlog maintenance liabilities to the Mercer Hall Leisure Centre. It has been independently assessed that the current facility is no longer fit for purpose. Having already been uh, converted from a, a dance hall to a swimming pool and a leisure facility, the realistic life expectancy of Mercer Hall uh, leisure centre site has now lapsed. It has been independently assessed that the refurbishment of this site in its current form will not provide value for money and is not a commercially viable option to progress. This is the reason why the leader has come forward with a, with a plan and this is the reason what I think is a, a, it's a realistic plan where we need to refurbish where we need to refurbish like the Hindle Leisure Centre and where we need to look at alternative uh, buildings or sites, we will be looking at alternative buildings and sites. The uh, Leisure Centre uh, is open for discussion. Uh, I encourage all residents and councillors to get involved and also use uh, the Hindman Leisure Transport portal to actually give your views and what they would like to see Mercer Hall to be used as. Uh, and I also uh, like to thank those people who participated in, in the consultation process when Heinemann Leisure did their consultations earlier uh, in the year. So it's important that we consult the community, the people who will be beneficials, the people who pay the, the taxes and people who eventually uh, will uh, 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 benefit for uh, themselves and the futures to come. So this is the reason why I won't be supporting the uh, Conservative Amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Munsif. Can I now uh, invite Councillor Paul Cox to speak, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I um, just wanted to raise a, a couple of issues about, about this. There's a lot of talk about the money that's spent on Blackburn Road and the town centre in, in Accrington, but I was firmly under the belief that the vast majority of that was heritage lottery funding that came forward. And I also believe that a lot of that funding as well, Heritage Lottery, also enabled Great Harwood Towngate to be improved. So I think when we look at it on the broader spectrum, areas of the borough are, are being improved. Now, I do hear what people are saying, and I do take on board that. However, since 2011, since I was first elected, I know for a fact what this administration has done in these times, and that's essentially helped bring buildings back into use. In all the townships, we've got Elmfield Hall at church. We've got Scapeless Community Centre, Spring Hill. We've got Great Harwood, Churchfield House. We've got Baxenden, we've got the Coach House at, uh, at Haworth. Mercer, Mercer House, Plate Limours. Yes, there is still work to do. Yes, there is still more to be done. However, Rome wasn't built in a day and we are moving forward. You also, in your speech, came along and said, there's no vision. There's no vision in this budget. Well, I disagree again. There's been vision in every budget we've put forward, again, since I was first elected, which again, sadly, we'll have to raise it, it's been raised before, hasn't been present in any budget you've brought forward since 2011. That vision that we've brought forward in the past and continue to do so has enabled us to deliver the largest and second largest nature reserve in Lancashire. 
has brought us nine green flag parks, more than any other borough in Lancashire, something we should be proud of, what we've done. Remember, none of this was in existence before 2010. We've brought in a new recycling scheme. We all remember the bags and boxes. Well, it's Labour that changed that to wheel bins. We're looking now at a green agenda where we're pledging to support and invest in our buildings and make them carbon neutral, make the council carbon neutral. We're talking about electric vehicles. Again, progression all the time, moving forward. We then look again at what we've done across the borough and we see that the biggest investment we're going to make, as the leader mentioned tonight, is in leisure and well-being. As another pledge, another step forward. There hasn't been pledge like that made at this council since this council existed in 1974. And you speak of no vision. Well, what I am going to say is the no vision that I've seen in the last 12 months is the vision when central government pulls the plug on the future high street fund that was supposed to target and help towns like this in the levelling up process. We had the rug pulled from under our feet. Now that rug was needed. And the other issue is, it wouldn't have just been Accrington that would have benefited, it would have been all the townships. So again, <coughs> as I said at the, on my first time I spoke, I'll say it again, please, Take these points back to central government and say, come on, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Let's give Ironman a fair crack of the whip. That's why I won't be supporting this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And can I move now to Councillor Patrick McGinley? Patrick. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor and, and Mr Chairman. Um, I ask a simple question. What is all this expenditure about for next year it's a, about strictly to benefit our electorate and that's why i protested against the high values uh, of many of the things suggested particularly for accrington uh, the forty-five thousand lights for pounds for lights uh, for the air with art gallery it, to me is just a it's a dream uh, uh, application if if we were very well off uh, Councillor Chris mentioned not costed out, or, or were, sorry, were costed out. Well, I asked this, when, by whom, why weren't councillors uh, informed in advance of the actual ideas? What's the money projected to be spent on? I'll bet you that even Paddy and his team have not had that information. I'd be interested to, to know from him whether they had all that information and sort of basic plans for the like the 100,000 spend on the skate cliff uh, reception. That would buy a little else, 100,000 uh, pounds. And I'm sure in these times of economic crisis, our members of the public would want that reduced. Uh, so I, yeah, I will be supporting the amendment tonight. Uh, but I, I, I again remind you about the lack of information from the nucleus of the of the HBC team who put all this 20 uh, top 20 things together uh, and, and I'll bet even Paddy Short's team don't know about the plans thank you thank you Patrick I'm now going to invite Councillor Nodad Aziz Nodad thank you Mr Chief Executive and Madam Mayor for allowing me to speak again the Conservative leader has recognised the investment in the town hall and market hall is needed. All she has suggested is we just kick the can down the road for that investment to next year. So we let that building erode that uh, much further. So rather than nipping the challenges of both buildings today, it will cost us more next year. That's not economic sense. I have to say, my, my colleague, Councillor McGinley, we may have many differences, but he has brought more to this debate tonight and that scrutiny than single-handedly than the Conservative group, including our MP, has done collectively. So for me, I might not agree with him, but one thing is he's brought 
a different dimension to the debate. For that, he must be applauded. The reason we, 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 the council has to invest in Accrington is the Conservative government have not brought any money forward. I refer to our MP's promises. In her election campaign, on the, her campaign video, on the 22nd of November 2019, she said she would make sure Accrington would get, share her, would get fair share of high street funding. 10th of August 2020, when she wrote to the local government minister, Robert Je Jenrick, to request that high street funding be allocated to Accrington. Rather than invest in Heimben, the Conservatives are pitting townships against one another. It's almost uh, the divide and rule, typical strategy. But, uh, but for me, she's advocating taking from one town, giving it to the other, while the government, the Conservative government, gives Heimben nothing. I agree with Councillor Jeff Scales. We need to more, we need more focus on the lo local townships, and we've got quite a significant success story in Great Harvard. You look at our high street, slowly but surely, that we have got a great, unique bunch of shops, and we're starting to turn the high street around in Great Harvard. People come into our town. It's a, one of those that attracts people in. In Richton, if we get the direct stop to Manchester, it will be a massive boost to the village and the surrounding town. It will hopefully be part of a regeneration scheme that will boost the high street, street in Richton. Because I think, I agree with the council scale, we do need to be promoting the local townships across the, the borough. In terms of uh, this voting on the closure of Mercer Hall, and, you know, uh, this thing, for me, I'll state on record, Mercer Hall is a jewel in the crown for Great Howard. And doing nothing isn't an option, as identified by the Independence Report. Great Howard, in my opinion, must have a significant leisure offering, as it has some of the worst childhood well-being in the borough. Mercer Hall has empowered one of the most hardest to reach demographic in our community. My mother is a member of Mercer Hall's Wellbeing Fitness Suite. Over 90 BME women are empowered to go to that ladies only gym. That not only benefits them, but benefits their children. And you, you, Heimben Leisure at Mercer Hall is driving change. So for me, Many redevelopments of the leisure facilities have combined a number of different strands, including public health, adult social care, and I take example of the project overseen by the current CEO of Heimben Leisure Trust in Thameside, which combined all three. So any redevelopment in Mercer Hall must include the adult social care provider, which is Lancashire County Council. Lancashire Labour has made a firm commitment to be part of this, given that the county council budget, as we've discussed now, is far superior than the district council budget. This commitment by Lancashire Labour to work with all bodies, including Heimben Ledger and the council, is make, will make sure that we future push and invest in Mercer Hall in an exciting and transformative manner. The Conservatives don't invest in Great Harwood. It was Great Harwood uh, Labour Urban District Council that created the poll in the 1960s. And our Labour candidate of, in Overton, Michael Hindley, was at its opening. The Conservative in, this, in charge of this council over a decade ago when Mercer Hall's swimming pool was at its end of its economic life just uh, pl uh, painted and plastered over the cracks and did nothing. Now they come with this uncosted million pound investment to showboat when clearly it needs a cohesive plan is simply not acceptable. The Conservatives close Great Harvard Recycling Centre. These are the facts. The Conservatives do not deliver for Great Harvard. This budget and this amendment simply is playing to the gallery and highlights that 
Conservatives do not deliver for Great Harwood. Thank you very much. Thank you, no doubt. Can I now move to Kate Walsh, please? Thank you, Mr. Wellsby, and thank you, Madam Mayor. I just, uh, well, I didn't know that Nordad was going to say all it is, and I just wanted to say um, I, I completely agree with Nordad on all his points. Uh, but I also have to agree with Councillor Battle um, on the fact that we do have to rely on handouts from the government when we want to regenerate the outer, outer towns, because that's the only way that we can get money together, because the council simply cannot afford to do that too the work to those towns. So to put, to, for an example, half a million pound was put in Rishton and that regenerated just one street. And that hundred thousand pounds, as much as it's, it's, uh, it's a nice gesture, but that's all it is, a gesture, because it's not going to do any actual work to the town. Um but where is our council going to find the investment? Um, and not just for Rishton, not just for Clayton, but for all our outlying towns. And I am going to sound like a broken record here, and I'm sure you can all guess what I'm going to say, but we need that investment from central government. So thank you. Thank you, Kate. Dan Harrison, please. <clears throat> thank you, David. Yeah, in the absence of uh, any promised funding for the high street funding, etc., cetera, um, with regards to sort of showboating the amount of money that they wish, but they're not highlighting what they wish to spend it on, this is simply a wish list with no, uh, with no meat on the bones. But then we look at what this council has done, and, uh, and I won't um, take the floor for too long and just simply mirror what colleagues have mentioned, but we are in a, a position where we often have to go out looking for funding in the absence of that funding from central government. We have many success stories as a result, one of them being Riddings Park, fantastic, the coach house, the fantastic endeavour there in, in Ozzle Twistle. Um, we have many things that we could do with spending money on in areas where there is deprivation, whether that be from Spring Hill Church to parts of, 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 of the borough. Um, but there's lots to celebrate. There's lots to celebrate on what we do with our um, climate change. Since I um, moved the motion, which was unanimously agreed to declare a climate change emergency, we're pleased to announce that Hyman's the first council in the UK to achieve both the carbon neutral gold and an international standard in the participation in the United Nations Carbon Neutral Now initiative. We're trailblazing, we're leading the way. And we're leading that way because we are very good at being able to work with the money we've got, being financially stable simply by being that good at um, making that pound stretch further. Because without the money from the government, we have to think outside the box. And this Labour um, run council has been fantastic at doing that. Thank you, Glenn. And on to Kathleen Pratt, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm just wondering why, after all these years of inadequate funding, it is now proposed by the controlling group to remove the Mercer Hall baths from Great Harwood, leaving a township and its residents without a swimming pool. I'm sure they'll be uh, keen to say that on the survey that's forthcoming in March. Uh, if Mercer Hall had been looked after properly, instead of patching it and putting sticking plasters on major problems, then it probably would not now be necessary to <clears throat> to be considering closing down the baths, especially when there's one or six money available from the sale of the Linden playing fields. There are also continual proposals to keep altering Accrington Town Centre from an empty town square to pavilions now to be pulled down to the removal of the bus station to some remote spot at the edge of town. Does it not need a, se not, not need a serious rethink of the current strategies to be taken before any further alterations? We now have proposals to spend more money at a time of serious constraint. And just for your information, finally, all our amendments have been carefully costed and they were not written on the back of the fag packet like uh, our councillor O'Kane okay, continually says. Um, I just wish to think that our amendment is quite good and it's been very carefully costed out. Thank you. 
Thank you, Kath. Can I now move to Sarah Brickcliffe, please? Sarah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There's just a couple of things before I go into the detail. Um, the leader of the council, uh, Miles Parkinson, said if it basically if if we want to repurpose this, but if residents do say that they want to bass there, will it happen uh, from the consultation? Also, Councillor O'Kane, um, at the end of the amendment, if he cared to read it, he would have seen that there was a full capital budget fully costed as an appendix, but as he probably didn't read it, as he quoted 75,000 instead of the 100,000, I suspect he saw the word conservatives and, and decided to delete the email. And I'm really glad a few councillors on here have given me the opportunity to speak about our town centre, so I'll move on to that. Um, as I said to the Prime Minister this morning on his visit to Accrington uh, Academy, my commitment has always been solely focused on making our area a better place to live and work for the residents of Hindburn and Haslingden. And whilst I still have the opportunity to do this in the uh, in the chamber, in the virtual chamber here, I'll use it in the way it's meant to be used to speak up for our local residents instead of the way that it's that we've seen tonight, which sometimes just seems like an echo chamber to score political points. Um, and I just need to clarify for some people, we are Hindburn Borough Council, not Lancashire County Council, so we make the decisions here. Uh, it's very easy to blame everybody else, but let's let's focus on what we can change in in this chamber and tonight we have the chance to do that by voting for our friendly amendments that we're putting forward uh, firstly i do need to say my thanks to all of the officers and the staff for their work this year councils have played a critical role leading the communities during the pandemic uh, and continuing to deliver the vital services which we do rely on every day but the government has shown throughout this crisis that it will give council leaders the tools and funding they need to deliver for their communities with over eight billion in additional funding this year alone and billions more of support to help them with the finances ensuring vital local services are protected and i've worked quite closely as well with our local council uh, but to make sure that those grants got out to our local businesses and i thank the leader of the council so, for working so proactively with me on this and there are members such as councillor scales uh the way he spoke tonight that that positive constructive attitude that that some members have taken is very much welcome because this is about the residents of Hamburg. but i'd actually just like to put this money into a local perspective for people the total funding across government just for 2020 2021 in Hamburg amounts to over 37 million pounds plus the extra that I'm about to mention later. This includes from the furlough scheme, over 30 million to local businesses in the form of grants, um, 521,000 pounds to local businesses during the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. If you speak to the local businesses who actually took part in this, they thought it was a great success. So you can, you can carry on criticizing, but start speaking to our businesses like I do. Um, there's, there's various other things. There's a winter grant scheme, the 127,000 that Highburn Council received. To, I think it was to spend by the end of October, but I'm sure that's still sat around somewhere. Uh, council tax hardship funding, the list goes on and on, and every penny has been given to Highburn Council to support our local residents. And the Prime Minister reiterated his commitment to our area today on his visit, and I'll be honest, I can't actually remember in my lifetime whether we've ever seen a Labour Prime Minister in Hindburn, but he's been here in my first, well, it's only been 18 months since I've been elected. He is committed to the levelling up agenda and I will keep pushing for that. Um, and Councillor Harrison talked about the money being put in for the for the green recovery process and how that's through Hindburn Council saving that money and making sure that every penny counts. Well, I'd actually like to highlight it to him that it's through government investment that Hindburn Council is now able to do that because as the leader mentioned today, that is through a sign off that they made through the cabinet of 2.3 million pounds from the government to do this and that will improve a number of key buildings and reduce the carbon output massively. So this is all money that has been brought into Hindburn 
by the government and it's the most that's been brought in in a long long time and these are things that i've been calling for all along so to say that the government hasn't done anything uh, I, I i do i do believe that's quite um misleading um what we're also seeing now is that this council following on from my request uh to create a vision for the town center we talk about the town center funding the reason that we failed was due to inadequate bids but actually due to me coming in and pushing for that and working with our local councils we are creating that vision together and that's through a collaborative approach and i welcome again the way that we're doing that um it only seems to be a few councillors that want to take that approach to get that investment but i i did mention it again to the prime minister today and he it's something that i'll continue to push for get me that bid to take to government an appropriate one for Accrington town center and i'll try my best to get it until you give me that bid we're going nowhere um so i'm pleased that the council has listened to the request for an economic development officer that's what we need that's what businesses are crying out for i'd love for people to join my high streets campaign do what your council leader is doing and actually look into it and look how we do this and work with stakeholders instead of trying to criticize everybody at the first chance that you can get madam mayor i've put my heart and soul into bringing resources into this borough uh, in my role as mp and i've highlighted what we've achieved so far but i won't rest on this because even today i continued to do that but i do believe that as a local council we should be protecting our local facilities such as mercer hall in great harwood and by voting for our amendment to freeze the local council tax um for the people of Hyneburn, uh we're putting the residents wants and needs first in a time that has been truly difficult for us so we've put forward a way to do this and whilst we might not agree most of the time we all need to seek to work together in these unprecedented times and i do hope that the controlling group will accept our constructive and positive amendments in the spirit that they are offered in the positive manner to support our residents of Hyneburn when they need it the most because using the slogan that we all use we are in this together and now is the opportunity for the Labour controlled Hyneburn Council to prove it. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I propose we take one more speaker before I ask the leader to uh, uh, respond formally to the amendment and the person indicating is Councillor Andrew Clegg. So that's the one final speaker I'll take before I ask the leader to sum up. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, Sarah just made an impassionate speech about how she's pushing and all this and how she's met Boris this morning. Um, just out of interest, what has he promised? You're pushing, you're saying he's making commitments. What commitments is he actually making? Because all we've had off him is so far is cuts. So what's he actually going to do? There's all words, there's all these impassionate speeches about how much money we've had. But this money is to help businesses that have lost money. It's not additional money, it's to help replace money that these businesses so, you know, we, we want these commitments outlining and again, meat on the bones. What commitments is he making? What funding is he going to put in? And I'm not talking like replacing lost money. I'm talking additional funding. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Madam Mayor, I have another uh, indication of a speaker, Councillor Melissa Fisher. Would you like me to move to the lead as summing up or would you like me to take Melissa's contribution? Thank you. So the mayor has indicated you would like Melissa to be the last speaker before the leader. Melissa, please. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for that. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Councillor Brickcliffe, um, has she has she got confused about where she is tonight in that she's actually had a member of council meeting and not in Westminster? Um, I do seem to remember that um, when your predecessor, Graham Jones, was MP, he was once kicked out of a local council meeting by your very own father. Am I right? I'm sure that some of the older members on this uh, on this group will, will remember that for trying to get involved in local politics. So please do make your mind up. Are you the MP tonight or are you a local councillor for Hyneburn? Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And with that, I now invite the leader of the council to respond formally to the amendment and bring this debate to a close. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. I'll, I'll formally respond to the written amendments which were circulated uh, yesterday, uh, which were the Conservative amendments. As outlined, this council 
just make sure. As outlined, this council is supporting the Leisure Trust in its transformational investment of 10 million within the next 36 months to deliver new improved provision across Einburn. We are securing tonight the financial standing of the Leisure Trust due to COVID by 900,000. We hope the government makes good on its promise that there are any losses from COVID will be paid. And so the 900,000 isn't required, but the council stands ready. Additionally to the council, has allocated capital grants for several years to pay for replacement of the boilers. That stands at 850,000. By next budget, that'd be 1 million, which is not required due to the successful 2 million decarbonisation fund bid. So it's ready to invest in the leisure portfolio. Simply, it's for Mercer all users and Great Hard residents to put forward an alternative use in the Yet Leisure Trust consultation. But I do cite, due to the report, the swimming pool is not an option for several reasons retain, contained in that report, which is independent by experts. Coming on to the allocations for Town Hall, Market Hall, Skatecliff House, the figures are allocations for these projects, so I am hoping for an underspend on them. As highlighted, an 150,000 is being made this year to prepare for a bid for Accrington. From this template, I see to address the other primary high streets, such as also Twistle Greatard and the smaller provision in Richton. Likewise, engage at a strategic vision in future years. Coming on to some other brief comments about townships and, and across the board. Yes, there is a limited bucket of water which the council has. And I, like all of you, want to have it overflowing and seep to everywhere across the borough. That is our aspiration. And we are ready to make those bids for whatever funding is going from whatever organisation. But we are limited to a capital budget of £1 million. If you go into the actual capital reserves and look at what is allocated, what is allocated is for future years. That million pound what you're taking is a future year million pound. And of course, if that's taken away, you're then looking at additional revenue cuts to fund a capital programme of a million pound and more. Of course, the medium term financial strategy highlights all those. But coming on to the aspiration of all councillors in every area, you came into being a council to improve your area. I came into that 25 years ago. For most of those years, there were lots of benefits, but difficult decisions. But since 2010, this council has to address the measures which were enforced on it of austerity. And we have last lost 5.4 million. But we've done that successfully, innovatively, while delivering first class services. As when the public are consulted, is that the view of the local council on its provisions come back in a positive way. That is credit to the administration as outlined by Councillor Paul Cox and what we've achieved over those years. But of course, for the aspiration of the other towns, which is come together due to the unfortunate crisis of pandemic, there is that community spirit, there is that coming together, and it's something we should not lose. And with funding, it can be kept and even if councillor scales is thinking of leaving the council i see him as a perfect person and champion and chairman of some board for richton and i see that replicated in all our townships it needs that community spirit it needs that business engagement 
and it needs a template, not addressing in one issue, but across the borough, because we're all interlinked. We all live in Eindon, and I think it's a beautiful place. I think I, I'm not negative about it. It is easy to be negative. It's for positivity and people to expire, which is more difficult. Them are the people who've come forward with projects, whether at IAMs, whether at parks, whether at communities, down to little offence. They are the driving people, even previous to COVID, who did all the events, brought everyone together. And actually, now, due to the pandemic, we are more getting out. We are more going back to that instead of being couch potatoes. And it's part of this councillor's agenda not to lose that. And on the big ideas, we do have to work together. I'm not here to take credit for anything. I just want to see the area prosper and get better. And I think in all our arts, that's where we want Einbund to be. And so there are difficult decisions. Of course, I'll talk more on the substantive motion, but unfortunately, the cost of budget which we prefer, uh, put forward and the capital expenditure and the allocations have all been scrutinised. And those are the ones which I'm putting forward tonight. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Um, so, as previously, I'm now going to invite you, Council, to have your votes recorded in relation to the Conservative Group Amendment as it relates to the Capital Programme. Once again, I'll start by addressing Conservative Group members. If you are a Conservative Group member and you do not wish to support your Leader's Amendment, please will you indicate. If you do not indicate, the record will show that you voted in favour of the amendment. So if you don't wish to support your leader's amendment and you're a Conservative group member, or indeed if you wish to abstain, please indicate. We have no indications, Madam Mayor, and therefore the votes of all Conservative group members tonight will be recorded as being in favour of the amendment. With regard now to the Labour Group members, if you are a member of the Labour Group and you do not wish to vote against the Conservative Group Amendment, or if you wish to abstain, please indicate. There are no indications and therefore all Labour Group members present tonight will have their vote recorded as being against the Conservative Group Amendment. I now turn to Councillor Patrick McGinley as the Independent Councillor. Patrick, would you please tell us how you would you like your vote recorded? As yes, in support of the Conservative Amendment. Thank you, Patrick. Your vote is recorded in favour of the Conservative Group Amendment. Um, by virtue of the votes cast, that amendment is, however, rejected by the Council. That means, Council, that we now move or return to the controlling group's proposals, which have been set out by the Leader. Um, I'm mindful, of course, that there's been a lengthy airing of views already in relation to the Council's revenue and capital spending proposals. Um, we are, of course, willing to take any further con contributions if people feel that they have uh, points that they um, uh, must add now to the debate, but equally, um, in the absence of those points, we are able to progress um, to a final summing up by the leader and, and a vote. But um, um, I'll await comments and we, we, we firstly have Judith Addison, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wellsby, Madam Mayor. Uh, looking at the capital programme, uh, the biggest item at the top of the list is the Disabled Facilities Grants. This is government money that comes to us via Lancashire County Council, and the amount here for the coming year is £965,897. Um, sometime last year, I can't remember exactly when it was, 
um, there was a cabinet item uh, about the proposed LCC new respite facilities at Great Harwood. And LCC, knowing that Heinburn had a lot of unspent DFG money, uh, asked for a large sum, I think it was something like £300,000. And uh, Councillor Miller and I uh, contested that because we thought it was an inappropriate use of the money. We thought that this funding was allocated by the government so that individuals who, due to advancing age and disability, needed perhaps a stair lift or a wet room or whatever so that they could continue to live in their own homes, that that was what the money was for. Anyway, there was a scrutiny hearing and it was explained to us by Mark Hoyle from Heinburn and two officers from LCC that, in fact, it wasn't a misuse of the money, that within the wider remit of the Better Care Fund, it wasn't an inappropriate use of the money to allow the surplus to go towards this respite facility. But the point that I wanted to make was why were we not spent, why were we not given, giving out all that money. And I know I put it to Mark Hoyle at the time, you know, are we as a council not publicising sufficiently the availability of this money? Are there a lot of people in Heinburn who could do with those kinds of adaptations to their house, but they don't know that the council can offer them these grants? So I'm just really making a plea that during the coming year, you know, that we, we make sure that uh, this money is widely publicised and so that we can help more of our residents to stay in their own homes with the appropriate adaptations. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. And I have one of the speaker, Jenny Molyneux, please. Thank you, Thank you Madam Mayor. Um, I'm just um, speaking in support of uh, the Labour uh, budget. Um, I think it's a real shame that the Conservatives didn't feel that they were able to put a, a full budget forward through to scrutiny. Um, and, and for this reason, and this reason alone, although the amendments are welcomed and the thoughts are in the right places, unfortunately, um, as my colleagues have said previously, um, these have not been scrutinised. They haven't been fully budgeted in the sense of a full budget not amendments and on this case um and for this i will not be supporting you know the, the conservatives and haven't and will be supporting our labor budget this evening thank you thank you jenny no doubt please Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rolsby, and thank you, Madam Mayor, for allowing to, me to speak. Just to elaborate on uh, Council Addison's point, I was chair of the scrutiny when the decision to allocate um, the, a certain element of the DFG to the respite centre in Great Harwood. Well, I must add that respite uh, centre will provide a vital service to our residents and their family. It allows people with life-limited uh, disabilities and illnesses to be provided with the right level of care away from their homes, giving their families much needed respite. Because uh, when you're caring for a disabled family member, it is a challenge. So I don't, for one, begrudge allocating the disability grant to that scheme because it's a vital service, and when it was called in, and we had the discussions, and we, and uh, I'm sure the two conservative members who called the decision in, I was impartial. There was no reason to decline that. And for me, we, as the drugs have evolved, people with disabilities are living longer. The people who maybe died in the teenage years are now living into the 20s and 30s. But that uh, means their needs are more complex. So that's why we need to make sure we have the flexibility to make sure whenever we're allocating these grants, we actually have the foresight to understand what it'll achieve and then apply it. And as long as we don't break any rule or guidance, I have no issue with that. 
And in terms of the budget that's being proposed tonight, I'm going to use the words of a uh, late councillor, Councillor Paul Tom uh, Thompson for Muzzle Twistle. He wasn't one of my colleagues, but he said something that even sticks with me today. This budget was brought to Overveen scrutiny and we broke the budget down and we put it back together. It's not perfect. There are its challenges. And, you know, we, Councillor McGinley and various others have said, you know, there's things even I'm not comfortable with. But ultimately, it's the only one that stacks up and is fully costed. If there was an alternative that was a proper budget, I would have considered it. But for me, if you do not vote for this budget, you're uh, in brief, you're uh, dereliction of duty because it's one of the roles as a councillor is to set a legal budget. It's not about playing to the gallery because obviously we've been broadcast onto YouTube. It's to set a legal budget, and as proven, this is the only legal uh, budget, what's and all. So for me, as much as I'm uncomfortable with the elements of it. I will say, given that it's the only show in town, I will support it. Thank you, Nodad. We have one final indication which we'll take. Um, I, I know Madam Mayor is keen that the meeting does end by the uh, 10 o'clock deadline, so we'll take one further indication before I ask the leader to sum up, and that is from Councillor Melissa Fisher. Melissa, please. Thank you, Mr. Wells. But yeah, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention um, the, the project that Councillor Addison has been discussing, because um, that is my very workplace. And I will be moving into that very building up at Northcliffe in uh, Great Harwood when it's built. We're expecting it to be ready maybe this time next year. And we do support the most wonderful people with learning disabilities. Um, when it is built, we will be supporting 70 plus people with very, very complex disabilities and it will be purpose built with sensory rooms and all sorts. And to me, that demonstrates how much this Labour run council do care about its residents. And um, you know, we're, a, we're a diverse council and um, it's, it's a positive thing. And I will be supporting this budget tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Can I now invite the leader, please, to bring this debate to a close? Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I think members have had a debate over the respite care over in Great Hard, which is now under being built. I think, you know, respite for those families who are caring for loved ones, whether children or adults, it's something which is very needed in the borough due to the previous position which was not suitable and to actually have a centre in Great Howard is very important. I know I was criticised previously for putting forward funding from the council because nearby Ribble Valley didn't but I think it's important to look after those who are saving the taxpayer a great amount of money by looking after their adults or children within their own family thing but uh, I'll leave that anyway I mean just I, I just want to sum up and really say this is the most difficult year local government has known in living memory and probably would have to go back to the end of the second world war in 1945 of course it's not a war but the implications and what everyone has had to do in the last 12 months and even going forward for a few months more has made some of the most impact on all services and how things have had to change but what I've outlined today is the major topics which we've all had but the aspiration in housing in employment in leisure in the high street and the green agenda this isn't a council on its back heels it's a council running forward it wants the transformation, it wants to level up, and it will work with government to get that funding, but it's for government not to let us down. And that is the end of tonight's budget speech by myself. 
Thank you. So, um, Council, I now need to record your votes in relation to the controlling group's motion, um, which, and you're voting, of course, on the whole of the revenue and capital budget proposals put forward by the controlling group this evening. I'll first address myself to the Labour councillors. Miles, can I ask you to mute, please? I'm getting some feedback. If you're a Labour, a member of the Labour group, and you do not wish to support or you wish to abstain from your leader's proposal, will you please indicate? And if you do not indicate, the record will show that you voted in favour of the controlling group's proposal. So that's a question, first of all, to the Labour group. I have no indications and therefore I just wish to be clear to all members of the Labour group that your votes will be recorded as being in favour of the leader's motion. And I'd like to address myself to the Conservative group and I'd like to begin by asking Marlene uh, Howarth as leader of that group um, just to help me frame this proposal. Marlene, is it your um, belief that the Conservative group will wish to vote for against or abstain from this uh, uh, for, on this motion? We would like to vote against. Thank you. The, the Labour if it, yeah. Thank you, Marlene. If you are a member of the Conservative group and uh, you do, and you have a different view from Marlene, um, so Marlene's proposing that all members of the Conservatives group, group would have their vote to vote against this motion. If you have a different view to that and you're a Conservative member, will you please indicate? Thank you. We have no indications and therefore if you're a Conservative group member on the Council, your vote will be recorded as being against the controlling group's motion. Can I uh, once again ask Councillor Patrick McGinley as an independent councillor Patrick, will you please let us know how you would like your vote recorded? For the motion. Thank you, Patrick. Your vote will be recorded in favour of the controlling group's uh, proposals. Uh, by virtue of the votes cast, um, the motion is carried and the Council's budget is set. I now um, hand over to uh, our Mayor, Councillor June Harrison, to bring the meeting to a close. Madam Mayor, can I remind you to turn on your microphone? Come on. She's a, she's a dumb M Madam Mayor, your, your microphone isn't on, so um, if you could do so, that'd be great. Thank you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you. Thought it was on. I'd just like to say I do agree with Miles Parkinson about Highburn. I think it is a lovely, wonderful place to live. And also tonight's meeting has been really, really informative. That concludes tonight's business. The next meeting of the council will be held in exactly four weeks' time on the 25th of March 2021. By then, we should have started our journey to, to recovery to a normal life, hopefully. So please all take care and thank you for attending. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, councillors, for another excellent debate. Thank I you. will now ask for the live stream recording to end and wish you all good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, David. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks all. Good night. Night, night.